Hello and welcome to Traditional Chinese Medicine Food Preparation Part 2. My name is Christina Kapothanasis. I'm a licensed acupuncturist here in the state of Hawaii and I am a diplomat of Oriental Medicine under the National Certification Commission for Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine. I am also the Executive Director of the Hawaii Oriental Medicine and Acupuncture Association. In Part 1 of Food Preparation, I tried to share a little bit of how I prepare my food and what I eat during the day. And I was prompted to do this series based on all of the questions I was getting from people that I was recommending specific diets to and they came back and said, what do you want me to do with these foods? <laughs> so I'm trying to share with you how I prepare my foods for my husband and myself. We prepare together and hopefully you will get some ideas. So we will just jump right in where we left off, which was with the leafy green vegetables. Um, I brought some pictures for you today. There are tons of green leafy vegetables out there, and not all of them have the same name. Everybody's probably familiar with spinach and collard greens and Swiss chard. The, I brought four slides for you today. The first one is ung choi, they call in Chinese kong xin cai, and it has a hollow stem on it and leaves. The second slide is amaranth greens. They also call that Chinese spinach, I think. It has a little red, a little red center to it. The leaf is quite delicate and it cooks fast like spinach. The next slide is sweet potato leaves. In Chinese, they call di gua ye. It's a very thick stem. You don't eat the stems. You just break off the leaves and cook those. And the last one, I'm not sure what language, what people call it in, but it's a kind of Chinese cabbage. It might be choy sum. Um, it's very popular in Taiwan. You can eat the stalks as well as the leaves. So these are some of the greens that we eat as well as some of the more commonly known ones. And what do we do with those greens? We usually steam or stir fry them. Thank you. Uh, we steam or stir fry them. Some of the greens are just delicious, absolutely plain, like kale. I love steamed kale, whereas other ones I prefer stir fried. Like the first one we saw, the ung choy or the kong xin cai. That is easy to cook if you separate the leaves from the hollow stalks. You chop the stalks up into small segments and we cook it similar to the way that we discussed in the last episode for some of the watery vegetables in stir frying. You put a small spoonful of oil in the bottom of the pan. You can add different herbs or spices of your choice. We usually pick ginger, but garlic and onions might be nice or other root kind of spices like coriander or nutmeg. And once they start to sizzle, you throw in the chopped stalks, coat them with oil, stir fry them for a little bit, and then you throw in the leaves, which don't take as long to cook. Ung choy um, can cook very fast and it's very nice, crunchy, especially if you have it with tuna. I think it goes very well with ahi. Kale, I think, goes excellent with black beans and taro. There's something about that combination I can't quite put my finger on, but it's, it tastes uh, delicious. Um, a lot of the greens take a little bit longer time to cook. For example, collard greens and mustard greens are quite tough. So what we do after we uh, throw them into the oil and stir fry them for a little bit, you can put a quarter of a cup of water in and cover them to simmer them on low heat for about another 10 to 20 minutes, whatever softness you desire, and that will help steam them and make them more tender. In Greece, my father's Greek, I come from a Greek background, and they put lemon, olive oil, and oregano on everything. So um, one of the green dishes that we make, we, in addition to putting olive oil to stir fry it, we can also sprinkle a little oregano during the last few minutes of cooking, just a touch or it'll get too bitter. And then you might wanna squeeze some fresh lemon or lime. That goes very well for greens, especially if you're having that 
with fish. Um, last time we discussed that the stronger your digestive system is, the more raw you can take. So some of these, if you want raw spinach salad, they have raw kale salad, all kinds of the lettuce, lettuce family. Those are all wonderful raw with different dressings on them. What kind of dressings do you put? Try to stay away from vinegar. What's our substitution? Lemon or lime. Some people will use flaxseed oil. If you don't have any itchy dry skin conditions, that would be excellent. Flaxseed oil has a wonderful nutty aroma. You can experiment with different oils like almond oil, a walnut oil. They have, they have a wide arrangement of uh, creative oils at the health food stores and those would be excellent for salad dressings as well. And another wonderful idea that I heard from a lady was kale chips. So for those of you that like to munch on potato chips or corn chips, especially if they're deep fried, but even if they're baked, try to stay away from the inflammation and the too much salt that they offer and all of the oil, especially when they use cheap vegetable oils, which we should all avoid, uh, corn, peanuts, safflower, the regular vegetable oils aside from olive are creating tons of inflammation in the system. So the substitution of kale chips sounded awesome. The recipe called for a bunch of kale. You rub about a teaspoon or a tablespoon, depending, depending on how big your bunch is, of olive oil to coat the leaves. You sprinkle a little sea salt on it and then you bake it in the oven at 350 to 400 until they're nice and crispy. 5, 10, 15 minutes, and you can be the judge of how crisp before they burn. And that is an excellent substitution for potato chips. Nice and crunchy, a little salty, and it makes for an excellent addition of green vegetables into the diet. Um, so those are the way that we prepare our leafy greens. We usually steam or stir fry them, and I definitely would like to try the kale chip when I have a little more time. Then we move on to our starchy vegetables. So as we reviewed in the last episode, most of the day are green vegetables, 50, 60, 70%, depending on how much you need to heal or if you just need to maintain. And then we can have a starch, starchy vegetable or a grain, like rice, millet, buckwheat, etc. So the starchy vegetables are sweet. They don't need a lot. They can be easily chopped into small cubes, which I provided a small picture of the kabocha pumpkin that we made this morning. And we just keep the skin on it, we cut it into small cubes, and we steam it plain. It's so delicious plain, it needs no other spices or salt or soy sauce. But if you are still in the beginning stages of this diet and you would like to have a little bit more sweet vegetables, I recommend roasting or baking. It takes a little bit longer time-wise, but it's extremely easy in preparation. You can take whatever root vegetable you'd like and you can even put a green vegetables, celery and zucchini, eggplant, all of the other vegetables can also roast or bake well. But the sweet potato and Okinawan potato or kabocha pumpkin, butternut squash, acorn squash, all of those uh, starchy vegetables will become even sweeter. They turn more to sugar in the high heat of the oven. So you just set the oven at 350 to 400 degrees and you can sprinkle a little water on the vegetables so that they don't burn or you can put a teaspoon of oil and toss to coat them. Uh, one of the herbs that I love to bake with is thyme. I think it goes really well with the more earthy, rooty vegetables. But if you want it to be more dessert-like, you can try sprinkling some cinnamon or nutmeg. Cinnamon and nutmeg are warm, so just have a pinch, but that will turn out more like a dessert and hopefully satisfy that sweet tooth with something more nutritious than white sugar. Um, you can bake them until soft. It, depending on the size of your chunks, maybe 30 to 45 minutes or an hour. Some people have trouble cutting the hard vegetables, so if you could just cut them a big squash in half and open it up, peel out the seeds, you can just bake the whole thing at a lower heat 
for a little bit longer time and then you can scoop out the soft flesh and that will save your hands if you have arthritis. I don't want you to be intimidated by the cooking process. It can be super simple. It doesn't have to be gourmet, chef quality food. You just have to cook the vegetables and get them in you. Um, over time you will slowly tell, be able to tell the sweetness of all of the vegetables and you will lose your taste for the stronger foods that people um, usually eat out. Next we can go on to the beans. So not every blood type works well with beans. O blood type doesn't process them very well. They're a little bit more meat eaters but I'm A blood type so I do do more beans and the way that I usually cook them is through soups or by making them into dips. I'm going to admit that I'm not excellent at cooking the hard beans like black beans and fava so I usually just buy organic canned beans to make my dips. For the soups I use quick cooking beans because I know everybody has no time so Red lentils, split mung beans, and split green peas cook very quickly and you will have a soup together, a nourish, nutritious meal together in no time. Um, what we do for the soup is we rinse, rinse, rinse the beans until almost all of the foam that comes off of them is cleared and the water runs clear. The foam will cause gas in people and it will make people more irritable because it creates heat. After we're done cleansing the beans, cleaning them of most of the foam we can get off, we put fresh water in a pot, bring it to a boil, and as it boils, more foam will come up to the top. So we skim off the top of the foam, throw it away, and then after that process, which takes about five or 10 minutes, I put different vegetables and spices. The spices that I like best for my soup is a small, maybe a half of a tablespoon of coriander powder for a, a small pot of bean soup. And I will put black mustard seeds, a one or two slices of fresh ginger, and if desired, you can add a little turmeric. The vegetables that I put, I usually put a little bit of carrot because that brings out the sweetness. Sweet potatoes also nice and adds a bunch of sweetness to the mix. And then you can add something green like a zucchini, or you can add a big bunch of leafy greens, anything you like, any of them work well, just whatever tastes best to you. Then you can cook it for about 20 to 30 minutes on low heat, and I can usually tell that they're done when the water separates on the top and the beans sink to the bottom and they become nice and soft. And then you can just flavor with salt and pepper and you have an excellent meal. For the dips. I usually don't use chickpeas, but I make my own version of hummus. Um, chickpeas are hot and they're not good for some of the blood types, so I try to stick with black beans or fava beans. The black beans are excellent in Chinese medicine for building the kidney and liver yin, which is what we burn off with our stress. So I go for the black beans and fava. Uh, what we do is I just open a can and I rinse it well under water. Then I put the beans into a blender with a teaspoon or two of tahini sauce, which is just ground up sesame seeds. You can get roast sesame seeds or raw sesame seeds, whatever you prefer. And I put in a quarter to a half of a lemon, salt and pepper, and I start blending and adding a little bit of water just until it gets going. It can make a nice creamy thick dip. That can go well as a snack with um, raw vegetables. If you want to put lettuce, it's great with crispy romaine lettuce or celery. You can also use it as a regular addition to one of your cooked vegetable meals. And then we can come to fish. Fish, I eat fish all the time. We're so lucky here to have such an excellent selection of freshwater and ocean fish and so I try to take advantage of that as much as possible. Uh, we usually broil or pan fry or steam fish. It depends on the type of fish that we're buying. 
Um, the lighter fish works well in the steamer. This is Chinese style. They have a lot of steamed fish in China where they put a plate in the steamer and on the plate you put a light fish like halibut or um, cod and then you can put a few slices of ginger or slivers of ginger. You can put scallions if you like. You can put slices of leek, which is like a large scallion. You can put some parsley and whatever flavor you would like to infuse in there or pick two or three. And then you put the lid on and all of the herbs will slowly marinate into the fish. And then you can just add a little salt and pepper at the end and that is nice and light and you don't have to add any oil or vinegar or sugar. So it's Chinese with a little twist. Um, another easy way to do it is to broil it. If you don't want to heat up the big oven, you, we just use the toaster oven that sits on the counter. It's quick and easy. Um, it's really best for things like trout. Nathan, my husband, does um, saba in there, the mackerel. We can do things like salmon and you can put it directly under the broiler. Turn it on high, just sprinkle a little bit of salt and let it broil until the skin is crispy. If you, if you want, you can add a little bit of oil, but the fish usually has quality oils of its own and it's not necessary to add extra oil to fish. If you want to put a little ginger or different herbs and spices on there, that's fine too. We usually put the broiler or bake it and it's maybe 15 to 20 minutes. The way that you test to see if the fish is cooked well, you put a fork or a knife in and you twist. If the meat flakes, then you know it's cooked well. If it's still mushy, then you need to give it another five minutes. Uh, finally, we use the dry frying in the pan to cook fish that's a little bit hardier, like the um, swordfish or shark or marlin. Those types of fish come in steaks and all you have to do is heat the pan. You can put, like I said, a little bit of oil if you like, or you can put it directly into the hot skillet and the oil will fry itself. The fish oil that comes out will fry itself. You just lift up the corner of the fish to check to see if it's nice and golden brown. Wait till it's golden brown, turn it over, sprinkle a little salt and pepper and oregano, the Greek again coming out, and we cover it with a lid and let it steam in its own juices on low and just make sure that you don't overcook it or it will get tough. So check it with a fork every uh, five minutes or two to five minutes and make sure that it's just, uh, just done. Another way is if you put it in aluminum foil and put it in the oven and you this way make sure to keep all the moisture inside whereas the broiling method will make the outside of the skin especially if you have a whole fish or fish with the skin it'll make it nice and crispy so the broiling you just put in aluminum foil and bake it for 10 or 20 minutes until it's nice and tender these are some of the ways that we use to make our fish uh, finally I'd like to share a little bit about fruit so fruit is still sugar, as natural as it may be. People come in, they say, I eat tons of fruit and vegetables all day. Yes, fruit is okay, and yes, fruit is better than sugar, and yes, fruit is an excellent um, transition to minimal fruit. But since it's still sugar, too much will create inflammation in the body, and that's why we try to keep it down to uh, just a piece of fruit or a cup of fruit per day. The easiest thing to do is just wash the fruit, peel, cut, and eat. And then we try to pick low glycemic index fruits. The berries and cherries are all excellent, and apples and pears are somewhere in the middle. Bananas, pineapple, mango, dates, um, watermelon are higher on the glycemic index. So we try not to overdo the too sweet fruits. But the way that I like to have my fruit best is through smoothies. I usually add, for example, a cup of blueberries or a pear and some almond or rice milk. 
rice milk is a little bit more like skim milk and almond milk is a little bit more like whole milk or cream. So you can pick which one works best for you. They come in unsweetened, but the rice milk is naturally sweet. And then you can add a handful of nuts, so maybe some pecans or some almonds. And that is an excellent uh, dessert after dinner. I usually have it after dinner because when you have your fruit or your sugar for the day after dinner before bed, it helps reset the neurotransmitters, your happy chemicals in your brain for the next day. It helps curb, sh curb sugar cravings for the following day and it helps make you calmer and happier through the day. So we try not to go through the day on coffee and sugar. We try not to rely on those stimulants to keep us active and energetic. We try to rely on the water from the vegetables, which is what we're really craving. We want to be hydrated and moisturized, and the sugar gives us a false sense of this moisturizing, hydrating feeling, but it's a false sense of yin, and then when it's gone, it leaves you more hot and inflamed than you were in the beginning, and therefore you want more soon after. But if we cut that cycle with the um, green vegetables all day, then you will cut your sugar cravings, and you will feel happier and healthier than ever before. We've talked about all the foods, and we also need to mention the importance of water during the day. As I explained during the last episode, the vegetables are important because they have the fiber, especially the watery vegetables, to hold the moisture in our body as it travels through the intestines. So that is going to keep us happy and healthy and energetic and sleep well and be free of all ailments if possible. But we do need to drink water that does not excuse us from having to drink water throughout the day as well. Water alone will not do it because when we drink water, we can urinate it right out. It has to go with the vegetables. And for uh, maintenance, this is an excellent plan. If you can try to transition into this, we have other episodes on Alelo that talk about how you can slowly transition into this type of diet. But these, this series of fruit, pre fruit preparation was mainly to help people just basic how to cook the vegetables, get them from the store to your home to the plate and into you. Um, we try to help people change their diet and lifestyle because we want everybody to be self-sufficient. We want to teach you not only how to heal yourself, but how to maintain the health. Acupuncture and herbs are what we provide to help you along this path. I've tried both. I've tried just doing the herbs by themselves with the acupuncture, and I've tried just doing the food and giving people dietary recommendations. But when we use them in combination, we get such excellent results, much better than either alone. If we use them together, the effects are multiplied greatly, and you can get feeling, uh, get to greater health as fast as possible. We want you to be able to jump out of bed in the morning and feel very refreshed and not sluggish when you get out. We want you to be able to sleep through the night and not wake up, not have trouble falling asleep, not wake up in the middle of the night to urinate several times, and not wake up in the morning and have trouble falling asleep again. We want you to be able to enjoy your day, have plenty of energy for work, not feel that afternoon sluggishness, and not feel that you are having a low immune system or getting colds frequently. We don't want you to be coughing up phlegm all the time and clearing your throat. We don't want you to be overweight. We want you to be feeling your absolute best, and that means alleviating some of the symptoms that you may be suffering from now and um, helping you to get on the right path. If you have any questions about any of the things we've talked about today or are at all interested in starting on this path towards health, it feels wonderful. And when you go on that path, you'll look back and you'll say, mm, I don't want to go back. None of that stuff is worth it. It's just not worth it. 
feeling amazing and feeling healthy and sharing that with your friends and family is the most um, wonderful feeling you can have. And I hope that you have enjoyed our show for today. I hope that you've learned some new ways of preparing. And please do go back and check out the first part of this episode for the um, ways to cook the green watery vegetables and why we are doing this. So thank you so much for joining us today. And until next time, mahalo.